Hi, I'm Hayden Nelson from NI, and today I want to give you an overview of the hardware and software for NI's Semiconductor Test System, or STS. So over here, let's take a look at the hardware first. And here we're going to be testing YLAN RF front end modules, which these devices are a power amplifier, a switch, and an LNA all integrated into a single package. On our demo load board here, we're able to test four devices in parallel, um, but today we only have two devices populated. So let's go ahead and remove the load board to take a look at the tester I.O. On this particular STS, we're configured for 24 RF ports, um, and, and we have additional I.O. of digital and analog uh, instrumentation exposed via spring probe interfaces. And as you can see, there's quite a bit of room for additional I.O. to be added. So taking a look at what's on the inside, we already have the panel off of this STS, uh, and inside we have a PXI chassis, and, and the STS being based on PXI instrumentation gives us the benefit of the PXI platform all packaged in a form factor appropriate for semiconductor and production test cell integration. So in this STS-T2, we have a PXI chassis with two NI vector signal transceivers for parallel RF test. And these are connected to an RF subsystem, which allows us to do things like S-parameter measurements and expand to up to 48 RF ports at the tester I.O. interface. So now that we understand a little bit about the hardware, let's go ahead and put our load board back into place and take a look at the software. So there's two things in the software that I'd like to uh, show you today. One is the operator interface, and the other is the test engineering interface. The operator interface is this, the software that engineers interact with when performing production test runs. So let's take a look at how this is going to work. So let's go ahead and configure our station here. And since we're not working with a chip handler, we're going to simulate one in software. So we're going to test 40 devices, and this is a, a, we only have two sites active. And so in order to configure our lot, we're going to need to enter things like which test program we need to run and things like lot ID and operator ID, which I've already entered here. So let's go ahead and start our production run here. And so when this is running, you'll see things like yield and uh, passing and failing and things like binning and test time. And so here we're testing two devices about every 590 milliseconds, which is pretty fast. And so whenever this production test slot uh, completes, the software will produce a standard test data format file on disk and or STDF file. And so now that we understand the operator interface, let's go ahead and switch over to the engineering interface. So here in test stand, we can see our top level sequence, we have two subsequences. One is for S parameter measurements, which these measurements were enabled by that port module we saw earlier, and YLAN measurements. So looking in the YLAN subsequence, you can see we have LabVIEW based test steps that allow us to do a power servo and perform four EVM measurements at different frequencies. So looking at a particular test step to configure a EVM measurement, you can see we can set things like frequency and device measurement pin. And because we're using the test and semiconductor module, which has the benefit of a pin and channel map abstraction, we can program relative to the device pin rather than the instrument channel. And here you can see for our particular device, we're testing the TX pin and the antenna pin. So to give you an idea how debugging such a sequence would work in test stand, we can go ahead and place a breakpoint here at the fetch EVM test step and run this. And you'll see test stand will spawn two parallel threads, one for each site. And here we've reached the breakpoint we've set. And it, there's, this window is for site 0, this window is for site 1. And we'll go ahead and, and select site 0 and step into the LabVIEW code module to see the test results in real time. And so here we can run this and see that our EVM measurement returned a result of minus 39 dB EVM, which is about what I expect. And so from here, we'll go ahead and step back into test stand, remove our two breakpoints, and allow this program to continue running. So today, I've given you an overview of NI Semiconductor Test System hardware, the operator interface, and the test sequencing engine. So to learn more about STS and how it can reduce your cost of tests, go to ni.com STS.